I told you at the beginning of this thing it was going to be so simple. But you know my TV ain't never healed nothing. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, you're just not going to see me carry my sick child. TV, will you heal? My precious Emily, or Becca, or all the other ones I got. Bottom line, simple. I need Jesus. I don't need any of the other gods that we're talking about this morning. I don't need an actor. They'll never come to my house. But Jesus is in my heart. We don't need other gods. We don't need actors. We don't need musicians. We don't need politicians. We don't need them. There's some things they can't do. Amen. Amen. But there's one man. He's not dressed up in gold, silver, but he can do it. And his name is Jesus. Amen. His name was Jesus on this very day. And guess what? Today, His name is still Jesus. Amen. He is still in control. Amen. I believe on this day right here, He had things going His way. Amen. Amen. I believe even in this world today, when we're confused about the outcome of a lot of things, I believe He's still in control. Amen. I believe today that Jesus Christ, we still need because He is still in control. Amen. Amen. Listen to me now. This man, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, you understand, he told us he had power. Verse 9, he said, guess who I am? He said, I'm a man under authority. Having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go here, and he goes there, and another go here, and he goes there, do this, do that, and they do it. You know that his orders, when he says something, it becomes an order. And when he says that order, it can even result in their death. That's pretty powerful. And this man understood that even with all the power he had, he needed Jesus. Come on. Man. Amen. You talk, but we all the all the time talking about being a big deal. Now this right here, a hundred men under you that it would kill for you, that would die for you, that would give you a big head. He shrunk his big head down to the point where he could see he needed Jesus. We get a false sense of power in our life and it can keep us from seeing we need Jesus. i got these people that work for me. Guess who I know? Guess who I'm buddies with? I don't know. Yes, who knows me? Guess how many people's under me at work? The bottom line, they don't make a pill of boots. They know nobody can do what Jesus can do. Amen. That's what we gotta understand. It doesn't matter who you know, or what kind of power they have, or what kind of money they have, or who they know. Nobody can do what Jesus can do. So that leaves us in the same place. We need Jesus. He realized he was able to shrink his big head down enough. You know what? We have to be so careful that our head doesn't get so big we can't sleep we need Jesus. We don't let things and money and, and positions give us such a big head we don't become evil. Not only did he have power, but he was a man's man. I'm going to tell you that. He was a man's man. He's one of them who sat around the campfire and chewed bark off of a limb. Amen? Serious. He was a man. He was tough. He fought battles. He seen death. He killed people. He was tough. But he wasn't so tough. <laughs> but he didn't see him needing Jesus. Amen. Amen. We get to a point where we don't want to be needful. We get to a point in our life where you know we don't cry. We don't let emotions fool with us. Because we don't want nobody to think we're weak. We don't want nobody to think they can get the upper hand on us.
Doesn't say words. He's singing in Jesus. There ain't a man in this world that doesn't need Jesus. Amen. Last but not least. You have to understand this. Understand this position. Rome had overtaken him. And the reason they did that is because Rome felt like everybody ought to be wrong. That Rome was so right. Everybody should be wrong. We're conquerors. You believe what we believe. We're going to take over. His country, he was in a country that his country had taken over. But he bent to their policies, to their beliefs. You understand that? He went not only against his upbringing, but he went against his whole country. Everything that he'd been taught, everything that he stood for, to be this military officer, he had to support Rome. And he had to show himself in times past to be a good Roman. But yet, in this situation, he defied his whole country and reached out from a chip. Um, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So many people that support their country today. Caught up in what's going to happen to the economy, what's going to happen to the land and the, the American way. The red, white, and blue. We're more caught up in that today than the need. getting on our knees in church. I'm going to tell you something today. I started out saying this is very simple. And right here at the end, it doesn't change. It's still very simple. The Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So that tells me that everybody one day is going to see the question is, will they see they needed Jesus? Or can you see that you need Jesus? Meaning time's going to run out. And one day when you're on your knees, and you're confessing the Lord, yes you are Lord. But then you're seeing that you needed Him. Because what the Bible tells us is He's going to say, Turn from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never do <clears throat> Most chilling words I can ever find to hear. But as that person is turned, is cast away, the only thought I can imagine them thinking is, Man, I needed Him. I needed Him more than politics. I needed him more than my country. I needed him more than money. I needed him more than fame. I needed him more than anything else in the world. I needed him. I needed him. Yeah. But that time is. But there will be those that say, Lord, as I always test. That's those that have seen before this time. 